Hi, it's Pastor Rodney with Real Life Discussions. I hope you are having a pleasant week so far. Um, sorry that we're a day late for posting this, but we have been very busy. Jared had four wisdom teeth removed, and Teresa and I had some appointments. It's just been kind of a busy week so far, but I always like taking time out to spend with you. Uh, listen, go and get you something to drink. I always usually drink uh, a coffee, um, today I'm drinking water. I'm trying to cut back on soft drinks and a little bit on coffee. I know someone said you start out the same way. I said, well, I want to make sure people are comfortable and I want them to make sure they get something to, to drink. And uh, I want us just spend some time together uh, sharing the word and looking at the word. Uh, get you a pen, get you some paper, and let's men you take a journey in the word because I believe that we're supposed to enjoy this journey. If we're not enjoying it, we're doing something wrong. And so I just want to encourage you to enjoy the journey. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to have some disappointments. It don't mean that you're not going to have uh, some things you're going to have to fight for and stand for. But I believe overall we're supposed to enjoy this thing and enjoy our time with the Lord. Now, last week I brought up a couple things. I'm not going to go back too far. I did talk with you about um, the... Uh, flies getting into the ointment and the perfume and how it would kill uh, cattle and how it would even kill people because of the sanitation issues in that time. And I just encourage you not to allow something to get into your life where your power would go sour. And my sister wanted me to kind of change uh, the name uh, to Power Gone Sour. And I told her, I said, well, I got a message titled that and I'm gonna be ministering that in the near future. But I do want to say this, Samson was the most gifted and the most talented in his time, but he let his power go sour. And we'll talk about that in a few moments. Very quickly, again, get, get you a pen, get you some paper, get your Bible. Let's enjoy some time together. But again, I want to thank you for taking some time out today to watch this episode of Real Life Discussions with Pastor Rodney. Listen, on my left, and it will be on your right, is a subscribe button. Now, if you're watching this on Facebook, you would have to go out of Facebook into your YouTube. You can go over there and just type in Real Life Discussion with Pastor Rodney. It'll pull us up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're getting and gaining usually one a day. It'd be great to gain about 40 uh, this week. Uh, but if everybody just on Facebook that's been watching would do that, it would really be a blessing to us. So if you could just go over there and type in your in your YouTube uh, where you watch you know, your do, YouTube things, um, just type in Real Life Discussions with Pastor Rodney Evans. It'll bring it up, and then you'll have a subscribe button, again, as you watch one of the episodes on my left, your right, or also on your right, right below it, it'll say subscribe. You can just hit that. And there's a bell there, if you hit that, it'll inform you every time we put something new over there. So uh, we would just love for you to do that. And uh, we count it a blessing for all you who have. And uh, hopefully it'll keep continuing to grow. We just wanna be a blessing to you. And uh, we'll do some more thank yous at the end of the segment. Uh, turn your Bibles to Second Chronicles chapter five. And let's just look at this very quickly. I love this, but we shared with you last week that um, the anointing that filled the temple can fill your life. And let's just look real quickly at the anointing that filled the temple in Second Chronicles chapter five, verse eleven. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place, or holy place, excuse me, for the place where the priests had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions, and the Levites who were the singers. Now they were appointed to sing. You know, I, I'm not a singer. I'm tone deaf, I cannot keep a tune. Uh, I joke with people and say, you know, they uh, give me my salary so I will not sing. But here, there's people that are called, that's their calling in life, that's the one that you wanna make sure you hand a mic to that leads you into the presence of God. Then it goes on and says, and their sons and their brethren stood in the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, string instruments, harps, and with them 120 priests sounding the trumpets. And it came to pass when the trumpets and singers were as one, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity, to take one sound to be heard in praising, thanking the Lord. And when they had lifted up their voice, that means with a yell or thunder, 
uh, with trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praising the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Sometimes you're going through things in your life, and that might be the only thing you could do. Lift your hands up and just shout, For God, you're good, and your mercy endureth forever. And sometimes you might have to do that. I've had to do it before. Then it goes on and says, That the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with the cloud, so the priest could not stand, or the priest could not continue, uh, or to stand also, to minister. Uh, because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Then we showed you in the New Testament that your body is the temple, that you were bought with a price, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. In other words, this, this glory lives on the inside of you. You are the temple of God. So that same anointing that was in this place, God has placed in here, and we've got to cultivate that. We've got to grow that. Your body is the temple of God. That same glory, that same provision is in us now. And so we've got to make sure that we allow that anointing to grow. Now the anointing and the importance of anointing, uh, the word anointing means to smear with oil or to pour uh, on the oil or to smear with oil. As you allow the anointing of God to grow in your life, issues that you've had problems with, God will take care of. One way for healing to happen is to allow the smearing or the pouring on of oil into those wounds or into those things and it will bring healing. That's the reason it's important to allow the Spirit of God, the house of God, the Spirit of God on the inside of you to begin to dominate your spirit, your soul, and your body so we can bring healing into those areas that need to be healed. And some of you have went through issues, you've had struggles, you've had pain, people's talked about you, people's put you down. It's time for you to forgive them, but also it's time for you to allow the anointing of God to saturate your life and begin to do a supernatural thing in your life that only He can do. See, the, the anointing, is the Holy Spirit. It's there, it resides in you. Listen to this in, uh, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. See, the anointing is the Holy Spirit or the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. He wants to manifest things in your life, not just through ministers at church. He wants you to uh, lead people to Jesus in Walmart or wherever you may be or wherever you go. He wants you to lay hands on the sick and see them recover wherever you're at. You don't have to just drag them to church. You know, we should come to church because faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You need to have a pastor. You need to listen to the word of God. You need to have teaching. You need to listen to teaching like you are now because this teaching can change your life. It can transform you. When I go on my, my walks, I don't do them every day, but I try to do uh, at least four, three or four days a week. When I do that, um, I'm usually playing podcast or something to build my faith. If I'm listening to people minister the word or I, I put on music and I just worship God. Sometimes people I think I'm a little crazy because I've got my hands up as I'm walking. I'm just thanking the Lord for his good goodness, for his mercy endureth forever. But here in Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says this, and it says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Now God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. You know, we judge, Pentecostal judges, if someone has the Spirit, if they pray in the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that's fine, and I, I agree with that to a certain extent also. But also, I want to judge if they're Spirit-filled uh, with the power they're producing. What are they producing? Are they producing the fruit? You know, don't, don't show me that you're spirit filled if you're not producing the fruit. But here is with power. So it's just not speaking in tongues. There's power from coming, from being filled with the spirit. We need to begin to exercise that power that's with the Holy Spirit. It goes on and says, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. And by the devil, for God was with him. So he, he went around and began to heal people. He began to, pe uh, began to heal people that were oppressed. And here I want to tell you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life, when you allow the power of God to begin to flow through your life, you really walk in the way that God desires for you to walk. And you begin to do good with 
the gift that God has placed within you. Um, the devil's going to shake. The devil's going to tremble because now you've got the revelation that God has filled you with something that he desires you to do something with what you've got. A good friend, and I classify him as a good friend, uh, Sidney Finley, uh, when I received the Holy Spirit, I told him I had received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And he just encouraged me. He said, well, just don't sit like some people do. Do something with it. And so throughout my life, I've tried to keep that in my mind that not only do I have the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, and I want to make this very plain to you. I believe we all get the Spirit of God when we get saved because without the Spirit, none is His. But this is just a gift. This is another degree, as I would call it. Uh, but here, He went about doing good and healing all. All. I want to say that through the anointing, you can be healed uh, spirit, soul, and body in all three dimensions. Sometimes people's spirit has to be healed because they've been hurt by people in the church and they've, they put up barriers. As a Christian, we can't have those barriers. We've got to show love and compassion. But also your spirit and then your soul, mentally, and, and, uh, uh, mentally, physically, God desires to heal you. And through the anointing, that can happen. The Bible says in Isaiah 10 and 27, and it shall come to pass in that day, I like to say today, that his burden shall be taken away from his shoulder and his yoke and the yoke and his yoke from your neck, for the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Read that one more time. Isaiah 10 and 27. We quote it often, but listen to it. And it shall come to pass in that day, I'm gonna to say today for you, that his burden, talking about the devil, his burden shall be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck, for the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So if you allow the anointing to saturate your life, it's going to, it's going to affect you spirit, soul, and, uh, spirit, soul, and body. It's going to begin to affect your mind. I know a lot of people that has been affected mentally. They, they've went through some mental issues. When I was talking about that, I'm talking about they saw things they shouldn't have saw. They've been around things they shouldn't have been around, and it always comes to their mind. Here, the anointing of God can deal with that if you allow the anointing of God to saturate you. Now, the Amplified Bible says, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the fatness, which, is, uh, which prevents it from forming around your neck. So, in the Amplified Bible again, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the fatness, which prevents it from going around your neck. The fatness. In other words, you're allowing the anointing to begin to grow so much around you that the devil can't stand to get close to you so that yoke destroyed, burden lifting anointing is now active in your life and you're allowing it to grow and you're allowing it to blossom that it's gonna be hard for the devil to put all that junk on you. It's gonna be hard for you to think about all that stuff that's went on in your life. If you're still, if you're still after 30 years blaming somebody else for your mess, uh, and they're probably dead by now, uh, in some instance, you're allowing people to affect your life. You are the way you are because you chose to be. It's time for you to say, I'm done. I'm not gonna allow that person to affect my life and my walk with Jesus. I've had to make those decisions in my life. I'm not gonna allow that to affect me. I'm not gonna allow that situation any longer to have root in my life. And there's things that goes on in your life that you've got to make that stand. And I wanna encourage you today to take that stand. That anointing breaks the yoke. That anointing breaks the bondage. That anointing, you want to be set free mentally, physically, emotionally, and other aspects. You've got to allow that anointing to begin to saturate you. And you're the one that's got to activate it in your life. You can't wait until if I get to so-and-so, That'll happen. If I get to so-and-so, he can lay hands or she can lay hands on me. Yeah, that's true, and you need to have that. But you've got to allow the anointing of God on the inside of you to begin to grow and begin to blossom so the Spirit of God can do the things he desires to do. I mean, he wants to, uh, to affect your thought life. Listen to this. 1 John 2 and 20 says this. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. 
let, let that sink in for a few moments. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I know a guy that, and I don't know, hopefully he's watching this, and I won't mention his name, but uh, he worked at a hotel, and, and he told me one time, he said, there's sometimes I don't know what's going on, and I just sit back and ask the anointing. He said, all at once I'll begin to do this and that, and the anointing lets me see what's wrong, and I fix it because that affects his job. So quit saying you don't know. The Spirit of God on the inside does know. Again, 1 John 2 and 20, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Know means to see, to understand, you all know. The Moffat says it this way, and you possess all knowledge because of who lives in you, not you, not you personally, but this person on the inside, that anointing, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it knows. Quit saying you don't know. Allow the Spirit of God to speak through you. My wife says, Rodney, you can do about anything you put your mind to. And I, I encourage her. I, I appreciate her encouraging words. But sometimes I have to do that. I say, Father, what, what do I need to do now? And I just, uh, I feel like the Spirit of God just begins to lead and guide me and show me what I need to do. Turn your, turn your Bibles. Let's look at this because we're talking about the anointing. We've been talking about joy, and these are together here because you've got to begin to see it's hard to allow the Spirit of God to move in your life if you're not allowing the anointing of God to begin to flow in your life. But that also is activated through the way you worship and praising God. So... Turn your Bibles to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Let's turn there. 2 Kings. Second Kings. My nephew texted me the other day and said, now I got to get some time to watch it. It's a little longer than usual. So we'll just think that, just think that you're in church service and it's a sh short church service because it's just gonna go about 39 minutes. So um, this one hopefully will not go so long, but I don't know, we'll just see where we end up here in a few moments. In 2 Kings chapter three, 2 Kings chapter three, let's look at verse 11. Because what I wrote down here, I want you to listen to this. The right music opens the prophet's heart to receive from God. The right music, praise and worship, the right music opens the prophet's heart to hear or to receive from God. That's the reason the devil fights so much with praise and worship. That's the reason the devil fights so much in your praise and worship time. I mean, you know, people grab over the sound system being too high. They grab over this. They grab over that. When they need to begin to realize if it's not destroying your ears, your hearing, hey, just worship God. See what God does. Because... I have heard of people leaving the church because of sound systems throughout my ministry. I have seen it and been part of it. Um, they want it so low that, you know, they're just like a peaceful time. I don't know what you're gonna do when you get to heaven. And then we read also in Second Chronicles there, if you realize, it was a thunder, it was a yell, it was loud, they were one accord in one place. If you're worshiping God and you're praising God, I think you should be praising God so much you can't really hear the people beside you because your mouth is just magnifying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Here in 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 11 says this, But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here that we may require, inquire of the Lord by him? He says, Okay, let's find somebody that, can, that, uh, that speaks in God's stead. Let's find a prophet Someone that declares the word of God. Verse 14 says this. Then Elisha said, as the Lord, so they found somebody. Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. But bring me a musical musician, excuse me, but bring me a musician. Then it happened. When the magician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And then he said, this saith the Lord, 
So look at this very quickly. A prophet of God says, okay, I, I, I've got to get the anointing in this thing. I've got to get the presence of God here. I've got to get this going. And so what do I need? I need a musician, excuse me. I need someone to come and play, someone that's got that anointing on their life that is called by God. See, musicians has a calling on their life. They have an anointing, and they should be respected. I agree, but they've got to submit to their pastor because he is the, the shepherd of the flock of your local church. But here he says, bring me someone that can play. If you bring me someone that can play, then something's going to happen. It says as they begin to play, the word of the Lord came. So what happened? Now look at this again. Uh, but Verse 15. But now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, this saith the Lord. So as he played, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And then he began to speak. This is the reason the devil fights so many churches when it comes to music. And then you've got so many people that's called to lead praise and worship. That that's their calling in life. Instead of doing their calling, they want to go pastor so they can have their own freedom. And I really believe the people are supposed to be placed in the body and you honor everybody in that body. Me as a pastor, people, you know, you're supposed to respect the anointing of that pastor, the calling on his life, but he's not God. He's just a man like you. Someone that can play musical instruments is a man just like you. But the Bible says that God fits them in the body as he wills, not as we will. I'm called to pastor and declare the word of God because he willed, because he put that calling on my life. So he's placed me there. And now I've been asking, Father, you've got to begin to bring this body together. You've got to begin to piece every single person that's supposed to be part of Real Life Church into this body. And also, Father, I've started this other ministry that I believe that you told me to start, Faith, Family, Fellowship, and Rodney Evans Ministry. And Father, you've got to piece people in there that will help me fulfill this vision. You've got to do that. I can't do it. Just like I can't make a, uh, a musician a praise and worship leader come to our church. I can't do that. And so I just want you to know sometimes you just gotta rely on God and just worship and say, Father, thank you. You're putting the body together as you will, not as I will. The Bible says in Proverbs 28 and 12 says this, when the righteous rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked arise, men hide themselves. But when the righteous rejoice, there's great glory. When the righteous, now I know that you are righteous. You're watching this. You have a desire to be after the things of God. Rejoice. When the righteous rejoice, there is, what does it say again? It says there is great glory. That's what we're after. We want the glory. We want the Shekinah glory in our life. We want God to show up. We want the Spirit of God in our life. We want the Spirit of God and the anointing of God to begin to saturate every aspect of our life so we will lose those things that things that we don't need to be fastened to us and we'll allow the spirit of god to rise up as you begin to allow the anointing rise up in you you'll begin to see yourself begin to be healed you begin to see god move supernaturally in every aspect of your life you've got to allow him so here again in second kings it says now bring me a musician Bring me one. Bring me someone that's called, that's got an anointing on their life. And they did. And here it says, when the righteous rejoice, there is great glory. Praise God. That's good news. Re begin to rejoice, church. But I believe that we've lost some things in this journey. I believe, go and turn your Bibles to Psalms. I believe, now this is my personal belief. I believe churches are not worshiping like they should. I, I just believe that. I don't see churches doing what they used to do when it comes to worshiping God. I see more people sitting with their arms crossed, waiting for something to happen. And I, I've shown you 
during the studies that we've been having, the Bible tells you to leap, to shout, to dance, to worship for joy. You, you've got to do it. I've shown you in the word, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I've shown you how to get it. You've got to jump. You've got to shout. You've got to leap. You've got to get loud in this thing. Hallelujah. But this, to me, is, is what's going on here. See, you've got to get hungry again. You, you've got to begin to rejoice and praise God and magnify God. Again, when the righteous rejoice, there is great glory. The church hasn't been rejoicing. You, you see little bits, but not a lot. Here in Psalms 42, turn there. Psalms 42, uh, verse 1. It says, as the deer panteth, that means to cry, for the water brook, so panteth my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continue to say to me, where is your God? Now look at this one time. As a deer panther or cries for water, so my soul does for you. You've got to begin to get your hunger back for God. If you want to know why you don't have your joy, you've lost your desire. You've lost your avenue into God's presence because you're just sitting there and you have no desire. You need this anointing to break yokes. You need this anointing to move in your mind. You need this anointing to move in your body and affect your spirit, soul, and body. But until you begin to get this hungry as a, a deer panteth for the water, so my soul panteth for you, O oh God. In other words, I'm going to look for you. I'm going to find you. Just as a deer needs water, I need you, Father. I believe the church has lost this. And it goes on and says this. And I feel this today. I believe that the church has to get back to desiring the Spirit of God in their life. And again, I've showed you, you've got to leap, you've got to shout, you've got to dance, you've got to have your joy back. But I believe that we just don't have no desire anymore. Whatever happens, happens. That's not what the Bible says. Call those things that be not as though they are. Here it says this. When I remember those things, I pour out my soul within me. I have a flashback. A flashback that God is awesome. And I mean, I've heard great stories about how my grandmother walked up a hill through a working coal mine, down the hill, back up, back through, back down. I've heard how people used to walk to church in the snow. I've seen some of it, but I'm, I'm tired of just looking in past. And yes, past should stir up your desire for the future. But look at this, this, this part here. Listen to this, verse 4. When I remember those things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. Where'd they go to? It says, I went with them to the house of God. I used to go. Now, what we have in our midst is, we look for excuses not to go. Family's coming, so I'm going to stay home instead of them going with me. I used to go. I used to go to church. I, I used to do it. I know there's people listening to it right now that's told me, Rodney, or Pastor, they call me Pastor, Pastor Rodney, we're going to, to come and visit uh, real life here before long. And it's been two years. And they've still not shown up. Nothing bad on them. They're just in a habit of not going to church. Break that habit. And get back to what you used to when your family shows up. Get them to church, praise God. That's because we've lost our desire. It's easy to stay out of church now. We've got all this stuff going on. It's easy not to go. Just stay home. Here I want to encourage you that they used to go. They went to the house of God. How did they go? They used to go with the voice of joy and praise and with the multitude. They used to go with a shout. Here, the word panic means to long for or desire as the heart is after a hard labor or after a hard workout. Let's put it that way. 
I used to. My, as, as the deer panteth, in other words, as I have a desire, my heart, after a hard workout, it panteth, it desires for something to drink. You've got to get back to that with God. You've got to get back where you have that desire to get into the house of God. You want to know why your life's all jacked up and messed up and your kids' life is all jacked up and messed up? It's because your heart is not panicking after God. It's not desiring the things of God. Now, I used to go. I used to be there. I used to be part of that. How many of you have? But now how many of you decided it's easier just to stay home instead of getting everybody together and getting them to church? The Bible says your faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's constantly listening. And there's something about being in God's presence in a house of believers, listening to the anointing word of God, not religion. Now here it says, I used to go with the voice of joy. Voice, look here, voice of joy. So joy has a voice. It means with a loud thunder or yell. I used to go with a voice of joy. In other words, I was excited. Praise God. I get to go to church. Hallelujah. I get to be in God's presence. This is exciting. We get to hear what Pastor Rodney says today. What is the praise team going to sing? Hallelujah. I'm excited. They used to go with a voice of joy. Joy means with gladness, rejoicing, shouting, singing, with like a trumpet. They used to go. In other words, music didn't have to start. They were already into it. I can't wait till this thing gets started because God's going to do something. I meant all the way to the church. I was excited. I, I remember growing up, and I hate going back to remembrances. I'm that way now, but I'm just using this as scenarios for today's message. I used to walk from mom and dad's house, to, from our house, to Oppie Church of God. And you were excited. You were just so excited to get there because you knew God was going to show up and do something. And the same thing when I used to go to Basintown and used to go over there to hear Pastor, Pre, uh, Pastor Pete preach and, and wondering what's going to happen all the way there driving with my mom. I was, oh man, what good things going to happen today? What, what awesome things are going to I went with anticipation, with a voice of joy. You're showing up with a voice of, what, what's a good word to use here? A voice of agony almost. We'll see what happens with an attitude of, we'll just wait and see. We'll just see what occurs when we get there. Well, you're already going with a bad attitude. I used to go. Some people used to go to church. Some people still go to church, but they used to go with a voice of joy and a voice of praise with a multitude. I mean, everybody you could get a hold of to get there, you were going to have in the house of God. What's happened to you? What's happened to me? Let's get excited again. Let's say, okay, you used to go. You're going back today. Hallelujah. I'm going to come by and get you and take you. You're going to get to the house of God, and we're going to sing all the way there. We're going to have that voice of joy. We're going to be glad. We're going to rejoice. We're going to walk in going, whoo, hallelujah. I'm here to receive today. Pastor, whatever her is and her name is, come on, praise team. We're ready. Hallelujah. And get up and begin to shout before they even begin to play. You want to get them motivate, motivated? But get back there and clap your hands and begin to jump and begin to shout before they even get on the stage and see what's happened. See, that's what it used to be. I used to go to the house of God. I, I used to do that. Quit change, change that today to used to be now I am. You want to know why you're not having joy? You want to know why you're not having manifestation, the glory and the favor of God on your life? It's because you're not approaching the sanctuary with joy and praise and with that voice of joy. Psalms 104 says this, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his holy name. Bless his what? Bless his holy name. You want to bless his name. This 
Again, this is telling you. Listen to it one more time. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts, the church, hallelujah, with praise and thanks and be thankful to him and bless. Go to church happy. Well, Pastor Rodney, you don't know what I went through. No, but you don't know what I went through. You don't know what Joe down the street went through. Billy Bob up the street went through. Uh, Hazel went through. You don't know what nobody went through. And used to, people would show up and you thought everything in their life was great because they showed up with excitement. Before long, they would get up and testify. You know, a month ago, I was going through something. We didn't even, you couldn't even tell it. Maybe they told a couple people in the church to pray for them. But when they come to church, they were excited. Now you've been going through the same thing for the last year and you've been coming to church with a wait and see attitude instead of with a voice of joy, hallelujah. Again, joy is on here. Happiness happens out here. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Joy is the deep central sense in God's word. Happiness is if something good out here happens. Quit substituting happiness for joy and joy for happiness. Joy is the deep central sense of whatever happens out here don't phase how I feel in here, nor is it going to affect how I show up at church on Sunday or on Wednesday or if something's going on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm going to shout. I'm going to worship. Matter of fact, I'm going to start acting like my house is my church and I'm going to shout around my house before I even get to church. Smith Wigglesworth said this, once a woman rose in the meeting and asked for prayer, I prayed for her and she was healed. She cried out, it's a miracle, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. That is what God wants to do for us all the time. As sure as we get free in the Holy Spirit, something will happen. Let us pursue the best things and let God have his right of way. Come on, church. Don't you think it's time for God to have his right of way? It's the desire of the Holy Spirit to heal people, to do miracles. And I really believe sometimes we're the one holding him back because we're not entering the church with a voice of joy. We're not entering it his courts with thanksgiving and with praise. A lot of this is our responsibility. It's our fault we're not seeing people saved, healed, miracles take place because we're showing up to the church with a wait and see attitude. Quit having that kind of attitude. Begin to allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life. This one's gonna go as long as the last one. Listen to this, I, I wanna share this with you. In Psalm 63, then I've got a couple things I want to read to you, and then we'll, we'll close out here. In Psalms 63, it says, O God, verse 1, O God, you are my God, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my inner self. My flesh longs for you, my soul and my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. I believe people's feeling that way today about the anointing because they're showing up and they're thirsty. They're longing for God to move, but they're going to church and they're finding everything but the Spirit of God because the church has a wait and see attitude instead of showing up with a voice of triumph. Where there's no water. So I look for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because of your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. My lips shall praise you. Look here, go back to verse two. So I look for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Let me ask you a question right now. If God showed up your church right now, what would he see? If God showed up, what would he see? Would he see you praise and worshiping God? Because if God shows up your church and he sees praise and worshiping and you magnify God and you have that voice of triumph, that voice of joy, then if people show up, they're going to find the power and the glory. But let me ask you another question. What are people seeing when they show up at your church? Are they seeing us with our weight and see attitude? Or are they seeing people shouting and dancing and worshiping God and magnifying the King of Kings? And they show up and they're looking for him because they are thirsty. Their flesh is longing for him. They want God to move in their spirit, soul, and body. What are they finding? They're looking for him in the sanctuary. Here it says to see your power and your glory. 
I mean, I, I, I'm going to make a statement here, but I want to make this very plain. There's nothing wrong with you having these things. But if people are showing up at church and all they're seeing is coffee and donuts and they're not seeing the power of God, or let's go one step further. If you have a canned message with no power in your canned message, what are they finding? Now at our church, we do use canned music. We've got to use YouTube at this point until God brings the people in to do it. But I know one thing. When it comes to the word, it's not canned. We, we allow the spirit of God to move. And I go down the road. Sometimes I don't know which way I'm going until I begin to share the word. Sometimes even on this program, I have three or four notepads out here, different ways we could go. And I'm praying and I'm believing God to show me what you need at this time. So what are people looking for? To see your power and your glory. Shekinah glory. The presence of God. The manifestation of God, the glory, the favor, and the manifestation of God in your life. People are looking for it. Here it says, my soul thirsts for you. I'm seeking you. I'm seeking you early. I'm going. Read it one more time. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. I've looked at other churches. It's not happening. I've been places. There's no water there. There's no anointing. So I look for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. He wants his glory and his power manifested in your church. But quit having that wait to see attitude. Let me read a couple things here very quickly. And I want you to listen to this. Well, I'm going to read one and the other one I'll read next week maybe. Smith Wigglesworth said this, I have a yearning intensity to see Pentecost and I'm not I'm not seeing it I may feel a little of the glow what we need is a deep work of the Holy Spirit God's message to come full of life and power I used to think if I could see this and see such things worked I should be satisfied but I have seen greater things than I ever experienced to see and I'm more hungry to see greater things yet. Here Smith Wordsworth said, I used to think if I saw this, that would satisfy me. But I've realized as I've saw more of God, I want to see more of God. And that's the way we should be as, as Christians today. More you see of God is more of God you want to see. Listen, I, I went long. These are, are getting long and I... I apologize to a certain extent that I should maybe break these up into two, but I just got to share with what God's put on my heart. Listen, I love you. And again, I, if you're looking for church, come and visit Real Life Church. We're a church where the word of God's going forth. It's changing people's life. It's transforming them. We're getting testimonies back how God's moving people's minds. God's healing their bodies. God's moving in their finances. We're getting reports like that. And again, I want to thank you for listening. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it so much. And also you all that are supporting Faith Family Fellowship, Rodney and his ministry, thank you. And if you're not, pray about doing that. If we all work together, we can touch people's lives. We can take this message and touch people in areas that, uh, that we would love to go into. Maybe they can't afford for us to come. But through you giving, we could do that. Not only that, we can bless some ministers that I really believe that need uh, some financial blessing, and, and I would love to do that. And I know there's other ways people can get that, but I just want to show when people call and ask me to pray, I want to know if God speaks to me on behalf of my partner or my team, and that's what you are. You're a team with me in Rodney Evans Ministry and Faith Family Fellowship that we can do things to touch people's lives and change them. And so... Pray about it. If it's in your heart, do it. If not, just keep praying for us that God will bring in the partners that we can do this thing. I really want to read this one, and I'm going to, and then we'll close. God is not all in all and never will be all in all until the will of God rules in your heart of every man and of the soul of every man until the redemption of Jesus Christ in its great and ultimate purpose becomes 
real, and fi finality. There is a place for you and me way down at the feet of the Lord Jesus in a humility so deep and true that God can put upon us the real power of God in the holy, heavenly measure that is necessary for the blessings and healing of all men. I like that. Take your umbrellas down. The spirit is falling. The cry is going up from the souls of men for a new revelation of the power of God through Christ, blessed be his name. A new revelation, a new excitement. Take your umbrellas down. There's a place for you at the feet of Jesus. There's a place there where this anointing can change your life. And I want to encourage you. I feel this today. I want to encourage you to get in the Word, study the Word, and let the Word of God change you. Get your hunger back. Get the Spirit of God back in your life. Again, I'm sorry it went so long, but I believe this can change your life. If you listen to it, you might want to break it down and listen at different times, but that's okay. Listen, I love you, and I'm praying God's best for you, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you so much.